Hey. Congrats. Seriously. Yeah. <sighs> Holy crap, dude. Genesis 27 3. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. This was Isaac talking to his son Esau. Before Isaac was about to pass, he wanted to share his blessing with Esau over a meal of venison. Even as far back as the times of the Bible, venison has been important to the human race. So now, join me and my blue collar team as we chase giant whitetails across the Midwest. Our goal is to make you a better hunter. I'm Ben Rising, and this is Whitetail Edge. Amazing cream. Yeah, baby. I'm about to go lay my hands on probably the biggest buck I've ever shot. I just smoked the sheriff. Yep, he's going down, sis. It's a beautiful buck. I couldn't be more happy to take him back home to Indiana. There he is. Oh my gosh. I just smoked a giant on a Black Widow mock scrape, baby. <laughs> yes. Hi, and welcome to Whitetail Edge. I'm Ben Rising, and on this week's hunt, we're following my good buddy Cody Griffin in Ohio as he's hunting a big monster deer that he calls in real close. Cody's been on the team since we started Whitetail Edge. You know, he knows big deer, he's shot a lot of big deer in his life. Cody's been doing his homework, using his Spartan cameras. You know, he's got his plots planted, he's been using his big time mineral licks, food plots, you name it, trying to locate, you know, the best deer he can. Oh, coming in here. This is our first set of deer. We come in here to see if we can lay eyes on this deer. It's probably the oldest deer we got on camera. Just kind of want to see how big he is and uh, figure him out a little bit. Uh, been getting a lot of daylight pictures of him, so I don't know. We let our eyes on him. His, his body's big, so it might be messing with the size in the pictures. I don't know. Might stop shooting right now. I don't know. It's just mature deer I've got on camera right now. So I think it's uh, well, it's October 31st. So. Big boy should be up and moving. That's uh, one thing that's holding me back from shooting. You know, I only get one deer, so I've kind of been debating one for not to shoot this one. So we'll see what happens.
So the year before, Cody never even hunted this property. Um, he didn't need to, he was on a better deer, different place. So he never even hunted this exact piece of ground that he's getting pictures of this deer. But the case was, he couldn't locate any bigger deer anywhere else. So he remembered getting pictures of this buck like two years ago. So he decided to go fishing. Basically, he was gonna take the Spartan cameras in there, throw some big tine out, and see what he could find. Lo and behold, this big boy shows up on camera, and now Cody's got a deer to hunt. So between the Black Widow deer lure scrapes, the mock scrapes, you know, and uh, current information of this deer being on the property, using the big time, Cody's gonna make a move and they're gonna try to kill this deer. Everybody asks why I like Black Widow deer lures. Well, the proof is in the pudding. So, the scrapes right here. First thing I'm gonna do, I wanna freshen this thing up to really get this deer paying attention anyway. So I'm gonna put this Black Widow on there. Yeah, baby. I just smoked a giant on a Black Widow mock scrape, baby. <laughs> I took the day off work, went hunting this morning. You know, I, I figured for sure I'd lay eyes on that deer I was after in there this morning, but evidently the good Lord's got something else in store for me because I haven't found a big deer this year. But I wasn't having much action. I climbed out of the stand this morning. And I thought, I'm gonna go check some new cameras. And I just put this camera out on Friday. Um, I've had some big deer in there in the past. And uh, it's kind of moved it around a little bit. There's a transition area around this hillside. And these deer transition down to the ag fields off this hill. And put that camera in there on a the flat. And wouldn't you know it, the first deer that I got a picture of is an absolute giant. So, I'm in route to find a stand. Uh, I think I've got some in my building. I'm gonna go grab that and I'm gonna do a hanging hunt. That deer is daylighted on that flat three of the last four days. Let's see what happens tonight. Could get interesting. We'll find out. Either way, I'll at least have a stand in here for later. It sucks hanging out by yourself, self filming. Got like 50 pounds of gear, walking in, trying to be quiet, trying not to get sweaty. I haven't even got a tree picked out yet. We'll see what happens. Oh, here we are. It's November 9th. Back in here after this big deer. So here it is, November 9th, and it's the Moon Guide app, it's the Red Moon. So Cody knows it's time to play ball with this big deer. So he's going in no matter what on his own, gonna, gonna hang and hunt, carry all his gear in there. Uh, he's got an idea to move his stand, and again, it's Red Moon, the Moon Guide is saying you need to be hunting, and he's getting in there and he's gonna go after this deer. He's got his black rack and his extinguisher, um, he's going to rely on that, see what he can do. Hopefully he can get a shot at this big buck.
just try to throw out a couple soft grounds. See if I can't get something stirred up. See if I can get anything stirred up. Maybe if he's laying out around that hillside, make him think it's a little buck out here. Mess him with the dough. Let's hope. As you can see, Cody started calling and almost instantly he had some reactions and he had a small buck coming in together. The one thing that Cody knew is that this little buck that he saw first was this big buck hung around that little buck.
Now, Cody's in a tough spot. This buck is coming, this big buck. He's finally committed, and he's coming dead at Cody. And this is where it gets real hard, because when you're self-filming, you know your options are very limited. he was coming this way, I was going to shoot him right here, and he stopped and just pinned me, had me pinned, and I buried it in a dang branch right there. Cody's a good bow shot. He's confident. You know, he's shooting a Cobra Harvester, thumb release. And it's hard to put ourselves in the position that Cody's in. And a lot of times you got to understand that angles look differently in trees from the camera angles to the hunter and things like that. And I know Cody's not a bad shot, and I know Cody doesn't take inhumane shots. So you can see he can't get the deer. The deer's moves too much, so he can't get the regular camera on the deer. But you can see in the second angle footage, you can see this arrow hit this deer and come out the backside. So you can tell by Cody's reaction that the shot he felt was marginal. So even he, Cody's even gonna wait till dark. He's gonna sit the rest of the night in the stand, wait till dark to get out of there because he does not want to bump this deer in case it's alive. Um, but you know, you never know. You don't take those chances. The deer was probably dead after seeing the hole. The deer was most likely laying down there dead, but he didn't know this, so he sat it out did the right thing, got out of the tree, come back the next morning with Holden, and they were tracking this deer up. Well, here we are this morning on November 10th. We reviewed the footage last night. This deer's dead. Um, he went down there and laid. The blood's just pouring out of him. Uh, shot went in behind the shoulder in the rib cage and come out back underneath of him. Uh, there's blood just dumping out of this deer. That G5 beat him up. So, we're gonna go, we're actually gonna drive down here and drive along the road, make sure you can't see him from the road anywhere. And then uh, take up the track here in a little bit. Uh, I haven't picked the arrow up or anything. I looked at the arrow and binoculars and it's coated in blood. So I really, truly feel that this deer is dead. Um, I'm giving almost 14 hours now so uh you know when in doubt back out give them time i've given 14 hours it's more than enough time i believe uh, like, he didn't run probably 50 yards whenever i shot him so he's hurt bad and uh so 
one of those things, uh, you know, it's, the leaves are so loud and I worried about getting out last night. And so what I did is, you can hear traffic in there pretty good. So I got to the bottom of the tree and I just took my time. Every time I'd hear loud car traffic, I'd take a few steps and stop and wait on the next one. It's November 10th here. It's just over the hill, actually. I can see, I can see the seat from here, but uh, we're gonna walk down there, find that arrow, and just start taking up the blood trail and just go nice and slow. Try to find this deer. I, I really don't think he's falling. We're about to find out.
Okay. Congrats. Dude, I know, I told you he's gonna go to the creek. He didn't go, he didn't even go 100 yards. Oh my God, dude. Thank you, Lord. Oh my gosh. It was getting. Oh my God, man. It was, uh. Oh, try to get the GoPro up here. I watched him stop right up there. And he stood there forever. And I knew he was hurt bad. I knew he was dead. It was just a matter of finding him here. And there's blood everywhere up there where he stopped. And from there, we found some good blood here and there. But it was just real spotty. And the where the arrow went in and where it came out. I knew that that's how the blood trail was gonna be. Well, this is real thick, nasty down in here. There's stinking weeds everywhere. And I told Holden, he turned right here. Instead of going out the bank, out into the brush field, he turned toward the creek. And I told him then, I said, that deer's went to the creek. Well, I'm sitting here looking for blood and Holden peeks in the creek. And this deer's laying here. And I ain't even put my hands on him yet. But I'm telling you, he's a freaking giant. So, gosh. It's brush bottom. Yeah, all at the bed end. Quick bottom. There's something to learn from this. I mean, oh gosh, I don't even know what to say, dude. That's such a giant. There's something to learn from this. Is you know, give the deer time. We didn't rush this. We give this deer almost 14. It's actually 14 hours before we ever come look, and. Uh, you know, these big deer, any deer in general, they'll go to water when they're hurt. And they like to lay in that water and it clots them up. And they usually try to find like a riffle or something like that to get in and clot yourself up. And if you don't push those deer a lot of times, you'll find those deer right there. You'll find them within 100, 150 yards. And that's what we did, we just stayed out. I knew the shot was marginal. I There's blood everywhere where I shot. I knew I hit something vital. Um, I knew there was no way he was going to carry it. That, that dead meat ate him up. And <laughs> this is just, thank the Lord. I mean, it's just one of those things that <laughs> he's definitely on my side today. Thank you, Lord. Man, I got to go put my hands on that deer. Oh, my God, dude. This thing is a tank, an absolute tank. Oh! Yes, the mass on this thing is unreal. Oh, I had this deer in 2018. I had pictures of this deer. And he showed up after gun season with a really bad limp. And I, you know, I wasn't sure if he was gonna make it or not. And he disappeared on me. And right away I thought, you know, that he'd went off and died somewhere. And <laughs> I didn't put a camera in here last year, stupid, just didn't do it. Uh, this year, I come in here, I wasn't getting any deer anywhere else. I come into this farm. I literally threw, a, he's broke a big point off right there. I literally come in, threw a camera out last week. And this is the very first deer I got a picture of that first day that I put that camera out. And um, I just threw a non-cell in here because I had all my cells up. 
I'll come back, check the card, and this sucker was on it in daylight. Two days, he sk he would skip days, and I just knew that I needed to get in here on him. So I threw a cell cam up. I come in, I did a hanging hunt. The farmers were spreading the north, so it was loud. I got in, got my hanging hunt done, and oh my gosh, that thing is unreal, dude. I got my hanging hunt. Didn't see a deer, it's just so loud down here. I waited a couple evenings, I hunted one other evening because I had the right wind. And lo and behold, the farmers come back, started spreading on right before dark again. And so I stayed out, stayed completely out, had the cell cam in, and I just waited. Waited to get a picture of him. And I hadn't had a picture of him in a week. I hadn't had a single picture in a week. And yesterday morning, my wife called me, and I had pictures of him, you know, in the evening, but not in daylight, but like 7.30 the night before, and I had him through the night, and my wife calls me yesterday morning at daylight, and she's like, that big deer's standing in front of the camera. I decided, you know, what the heck, I'm going to go out, I'm going to go try to kill this deer. He was in there in daylight. It's just a little block of timber in here. Oh, he's just, just a little block of timber in here. It's all, there's a road on this side and there's a road on that side and there's all cropland up above. It's all standing corn right now. And these deer run this block of timber. And at like five o'clock, I'd made up my mind, you know, haven't seen a deer. I'm gonna go ahead and grunt just to see if I can get something going. <laughs> I grunted, I called a little buck out of this real thick bottom. He come right up in behind me. I turn around, I'm videoing him. I turn around and look. 250 yards out the hillside and I see this big joker go up through my opening that I got that I can see and I knew instantly he was coming my way he got out there had him at 25 yards he wouldn't turn broadside and he started seeing that little buck that was in behind me and that little buck was completely downwind of me you know I'd lathered down with the phase fuel foam and that wind was blowing directly in that deer's face, but he never did smell me. Um, this deer ended up seeing him, turned and started walking right at him. And I had one little spot, you know, I was cell phone, so I was panicking trying to get it. And uh, I had one little spot there that I could shoot him. And when I was drawing back, for some reason, he just stopped. And he looked up the hill, and then he turned and looked, and he pinned me. And when he pinned me, I knew it was either now never and I can literally see my stand from here I waited until complete pitch black and walked out as quiet as I could this is just <laughs> so real the mass on this deer is just stupid it's <laughs> he's not going to be a great big high score deer but that deer is massive gosh it's massive now you can tell by the hole in this deer that that deer didn't do much last night um, pretty epic hole that that mega meat put in there. Pretty incredible hunted, hunt and footage by Cody. Um, congrats, buddy. It's a heck of a buck. And I mean, the deer was way bigger than Cody even thought. I mean, the mass on this deer is incredible. But what a huge Ohio whitetail. Um, and you can see again how the Whitetail Edge team relies on the calling techniques from the illusion systems. We're using the moon guide. It's just stuff that works a lot. You know, spraying the Black Widow in the air. It's just it's stuff that works for us, and our team continually uses it year in and year out to harvest big deer. Thanks for watching Whitetail Edge. Hope you learned something this week. Catch us here next week on Mossy Oak Go as we go to Illinois with Paul Jansen and his boys.